Hello folks and welcome back to another um, the Blood Bowl tier list. This time around we're going to be talking about the YouTuber League style. Now YouTuber League style is quite simple. It's 8 to 12 matches and there is playoffs and there is a final. So as a grand total of 15 matches at most or 11 matches. So there is a lot more matches and more room for the teams to grow. And this is where things will change. Now, as you all know in the YouTube format, we only pick one team, and that team's the only team is allowed. So, for example, if I took the Amazons, no one else could take them. If someone took the Dark Elves, no one could take the Dark Elves. <clears throat> That's how it works. With that being said, and now the, um, the matter is resolved, let us dive in and see where people um, stack up. First off, the Amazons. Now, the Amazons will go to above average. Because now they have time to develop and grow. I mean, if you get that strength 4 piece a block, a strength 4 blotch piece is horrifying to deal with. But it is a power piece. Same with the, um, the Jaguar blockers. They're the same. So, yes, they are going to be one, one of, I think, three teams that are predictable. But they're still going to be a devastating force with, with their blotch pieces. However, they do suffer from one problem, and that is their armor is a bit sus. But with other teams, eventually we'll get stronger to deal with them. As soon as anyone sees an Amazon team, you're going to see a lot of tackles running about. But they are going to be still a very hard team to deal with. Black Orcs. Balance. Yeah, I know, I know why they've not gone higher, but hear me out. They suffer the same problem. Yes, they have good, pe they've got that brawl thing, but it's the goblins again. You need to get a goblin either to get a stat up or get him block so that way he could be your main ball carrier. And the black orcs, I mean, 9 to 10, you're going to take block. Even though you have, you know, brawl, you're gonna need block when they like when they're gonna attack. You're gonna need it as an insurance policy. I mean, you could go with like guard and mighty blow, but let's be honest, you're gonna take block just to make sure they don't go down on their own sword. So yeah, they're in the middle. Chaos dwarves, balance. With longer games, yes, they can get stronger, but so do the opponents around them. And could easily crack their armor. Like I said, in the previous video, this was only five, four games where they, they would just be hard to get rid of anyway. But in the YouTube League, they become more sus. Especially the goblins, because they the hobgoblins, they could be easily sussed out. The normal Chaos Dwarves, yeah, you can give them Guard and Mighty Blow, which will make them absolute monsters in the line. But the problem is, as soon as they start spreading the ball, they have to spread out, and it could cause problems. So there is limits. Kills Renegades. Balance. Early on in their life in this league, they would be slow to get going, but once they get going, oh my god, they're going to be nice, nice and nasty to deal with. Because, one, they will have their um, more players with skills, the big guys will be more coherent with some good skills. And your elf, if he survives, is going to be a hard piece to bring down and is going to be the main like driving force of the team. And eventually you will bring in some more players like a goblin, a oak, an orc, a skaven. You will be bringing in more players to, to buff the ranks. <clears throat> but they're still going to be a nice team. Chaos. Balance. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Wait, chaos balance? Yeah. The reason for that is it's quite simple, guys. It is quite simple. It takes a while for the chaos to get going because they've got to have one or two beastmen dedicated to ball handling. I mean, don't get me wrong. As soon as you give a chaos warrior block, he's just an absolute wall to deal with. <clears throat> and if you can make a couple of blitz pieces through the, um, you know, the beastmen... Oh, hell yeah. And as far as the um, 
the Minotaur goes, I mean, he's still a great piece, but it's going to take him a while to level up. Because unfortunately, with the way the system works now, it takes a while for these guys to level up. So you're going to have to think smart what you're going to do with him. Are you going to make him into a, have a block piece? Or are you going to make him have a dodge piece? You really got to think hard. I mean, the Minotaur is one of the few players I would recommend going over to stat level. <clears throat> So the stat level or a skill that's out of his perfume to make him a monster. So he'll have to have to spend longer time without skilling up. <coughs> Dark Elves. Above average. Because more and more teams now will be stronger and able to handle them better, it really is when do you get these guys? You get them early, you're not going to handle them unless you are a certain team that can handle them. If not... Yeah, going to struggle. However, this is where Dark Elves' attrition could come into play. Remember what I said in the previous where they could just survive a five players? Well, in this league, that's not an option. It, well, sorry, it is still an option, but not, but not it's preferable because if you have a lot of like players that have got like loner, you're going to struggle a bit to mo to make your plays. So this is where that strategy starts to claw into them a little bit. They're still powerful. I mean, if you can give the Blitzers dodge or tackle or mighty blow, they're going to be nasty pieces. And they could get them easy. It's ludicrous how quickly they can get them. I mean, yes, the Assassin's a joke. Yes. But the rest of the team is sturdy. And I mean, you've got the, the Witch Elf, who is an absolute... Blitz Merchant, you could just use her to go smash someone out the crowd or break pieces up. Dwarves. Balance. Now, <clears throat> yes, early on they are a nightmare to deal with. But, as the season goes on, they're going to get weaker and weaker because of their skill ceiling. You see, the skill ceiling for these guys it's already there. They're at the top. Yep. The main lineman only going to take probably two skills, which is guard and mighty blow. And maybe some other skills to help them stop certain shenanigans. But that's it. The runner will probably get a few skills like block, dodge. The <coughs> troll slayer, same here, only have a couple of skills like, like tackle and mighty blow. And the Blitzers will probably go for Tackle and Mighty Blow. I mean, yes, you can get a Death Roller who is an absolute monstrosity when he gets going. But, I'm afraid to say this about the Death Roller, he does get weaker. Any smart player sees that Death Roller, they're going to make damn sure they get, up, get a touchdown quick enough just to force it to go. <coughs> but other than that, the Dwarves are pretty much on the balance side. Goblins. Below average. The problem with the goblins is they're still good, but mortality rate and every other team will get stronger. I mean, it really it just depends when you get the goblins. If you get them early on, you're not going to be able to deal with them because you can't get a hold of them. Unless you're a certain team like the, like the Norse or the, the Dwarfs. Everyone else, however... Once you get to later stages, they become weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. So, yeah. They're not the greatest. Not dead yet. Halflings are the same. Above average, the same things happen to them. <coughs> They'll get weaker and weaker and weaker as season progresses because of the fact that, you know, their mortality rate is not that great. <coughs> and you're going to need at least... Assuming the comments, you're going to need two or three players with the blood skill just to keep them alive. High elves. Above average. Same as the dark elves. They have the same problem. Yes, they could still survive with the five players, but their strategy and skills could get hampered with many injuries. So, the more injuries they suffer, the worse it gets. Now, they might go through a season without an injury and they could become unstoppable monsters. But if they start taking injuries on the chaff players, it might hurt them a little bit. But if they start taking injuries on the key players, oh, that's a problem. Humans. 
above average. I mean, let's be honest, guys. Your blitzes are going to take bl tackle a mighty blow. Your linemen are all going to take block and guard, or slightly, to make them a good line. The catcher is going to take block, sidestep, or sprint, or sure feet. Definitely block to keep them up and up on the ground, but the rest will be. How do you want to do? I make him like a monster runner, just like he does. Actually, blitzes down the field where you can't catch him. Or are you going to make him a like a tricky opponent to get to grab a hold of? And the thrower, you could just don't want to do block with him. And just just make sure you get to his pass skill, all his good pass skills, and he's just an absolute throwing machine. He could he could out throw the elves. How good he could be. So yeah, above average. <clears throat> they get stronger as they go. I mean, if they lose their normal pieces, they're not too robust. It's when they lose their best pieces that they could be a little bit ticked. But they've got enough tricks in their bag to pull anything off. Pure nobility. Told you, they're getting stronger because they have the time to get the skills they need. And also, I mean, with the um, the peasants, if you can give them block or even dodge, they're just like, you can't hold them. They, they could just go, right, push, I'll use my fend. Yeah, you can't get me. I'm free to do whatever I like. So, yeah. These fend guys could be absolute nightmare, or you could be a royal git and go, right. Right, I could go block, keep us up, or have wrestle and go, right. Oh, you have block, but I have wrestle, so I can out maneuver you. It's like, Ooh. they can be annoying. That's why they are above average in this format, because they have time to develop. Kemri. Shocked? It shouldn't be, because, like I said, the format they were in previously was not suited for them, but this will. Because, one, their players get time to develop. I mean, you could have Kemri with block or guard on them to make them absolute horrors. And the Fruera, if he's not absolutely destroyed, could get a few good skills. The Blitzrock could get a few good skills. And the Boneheads could get a few, ta few block skills. So, <clears throat> yeah. They can develop. They have more time. Corn. <clears throat> Balanced. Again. More time. By the time you reach near the end of the season, you probably have a few players with block that could do friend could go frenzy nuts, could go attacking more. Even the Griblies could go right. Let's put a couple of blocks on a couple of them, right? They can go around bashing people and open up plays. Same with the like the corner goals. As soon as they get a couple of points, a couple of grades, which will now tend to be block and you know and sure hands or Extra extra arms. It's just going to be like the chaos. So they will get better. Lizard men. Above average. A saw with block is the most horrifying thing you'll ever see. Because if that thing has block, it's like, yep, I'm in trouble. I know the saw are slow to level up, but by the time you level up a skink to have block, it's like saying, right, unless you have tackle, you are not bringing me down, buster. And the fact you give them like sprint, short feet, or sidestep, they just yeah, you're not gonna deal with them. They're they're gone. They're gone. Necromantic. Balance. Yep. The farm I mean, don't get me wrong, the werewolf will be the most horrifying piece you're gonna deal with. And the ghost. But that's it. The rest of the team, yeah, not so much. So only four players, and don't get me wrong. The werewolf is a horrifying piece, but as soon as the werewolf is taken out, because nine ten, anyone's gonna see a werewolf, they're going to target it. The werewolf, I would say, is the number one player you should take out, because once they lose their werewolves, that's it. They're buggered. I mean, by the point they would have some ghouls, but the werewolf is the biggest threat. <clears throat> but still a balanced team. Norse. Balance. Now they drop one because. Unlike the Amazons that went up because getting blocked is going to be beneficial, the Norse go down. Why? Attrition. Now, don't get me wrong. The Valkyrie will be a horrifying piece to deal with. 
But if the ho- but if the Valkyrie is not properly kitted quick enough, nine to ten, it's going to be targeted and dealt with. And the armor is also an issue. The pig is no good, and pretty much this team will struggle. So, yeah, it's attrition. Nurgle. Blow average. Now, they're not at their sweet spot yet. They're just out of it. But they're still going to be powerful, and they're still going to get better. They're just not that sweet spot. That's the problem with Nurgle. They need to be at that sweet spot to be devastating. Nurgle is for if you're going to play the long game. But trust me, they're getting better. Ogres. Yep, still below average. It's not an issue. But they can get more and more star players. However, you must have 11 of the original team. So you've got to have to get Snotlins. I mean, you're going to get five star players, which is still good. But that's the problem you're going to face again. Any smart player will look at that thing, right? Give it to the snot lines and go, right. I'm going to mark these guys here to your ogres, right? Can you get a ball? Can you run with it? Because you have a bonehead issue to go to deal with. <clears throat> so, yeah. Blow average. Orcs. Balance. Yes. <clears throat> Animosity hurts it again. And this team can be a killer machine with, like, tackle and block. Or the thrower gets a few skills. And the big ins solid get skills. But the problem is, unfortunately for the big ins, they are slow to get skill ups. As well as your linemen. The, the 9 10, it's going to be your blitzers or your throwers is going to get skill ups, but the rest are slow. Or will the Lions? Below average. <clears throat> because they have time to build their team, but like Nurgle, they're not at their sweet spot. So. <clears throat> Over the lines, not at a sweet spot yet. Getting stronger, but not there. Pro elves, above average. Yet again, like most of the elves, they are be- they do get better, but attrition can be their downfall. Because as soon as they start losing their pieces, their strategies could get hurt. But also, if any of their key pieces get caught, there's problems. And plus, as well, many teams will f- see a pro elf team that go, right, I'm expecting probably Dodge going to be somewhere lurking about coming up. So, if I'm facing them like later in the season, I might as well buy, get three or four players with tackle to say, right, I'm dealing with that issue. So, yeah. <clears throat> and that's why I recommend anyone who's playing in the Bubble League, look what you're facing and when you're facing. If you're facing pro elves like early in the season, yeah, there's nothing you can do. You're just going to have to hope you can do some horrific damage and try and counterattack. Or if you get them later and you know they're going to play with dodge pieces, you make proper preparations. Skaven. Balance. Yes, yes, I'm aware, everyone. Balance, really? Don't get me wrong, the governors will be a monster opponents to deal with, but that's it. They're only strength two. And plus the fact as well, any smart player will go, right, I'll take the ball and say, right, come at me, guys. And the second you come at me, I'm ready for you. And nine ten, you're going to see a scheme and you're going to have people with tackle to go, right, we're going head hunting. Right, Ogre, still a bad piece for this team, unfortunately. The rest of the players, well, they'll still level up, but nine ten, the Gurmans are going to get most of the points and the thrower might get the odd point for passing. The Blitzers, Odd casualty, but it's mainly the gutter runners. Snotlins. Below average. And you guess why? The Snotlins. You only allow five players, but in the late game of the season, you can get the most obscene team. I've seen one where someone had Morgan Fogg, Ripper, I can't remember, I think it was, I think it was like a, a Blitzer and a Boar Handler. And you imagine having Ripper and Morgan Fogg in your front line with the two trolls. It's like, yeah, you are not clearing that line. <laughs> you are not clearing that line. I don't care who you are. Even the Tomb Guardians will go look at it thinking, oh dear. So, yeah. I mean, 
they're okay, but they still have the same problems. I'm dead. Balance. The ghouls will get stronger, the rights will get stronger, but it's the rest of the team that's the question. The mummies are still powerful, but unless they can get a lot of casualties early and get a few good skills, there's just going to be big, huge lumbering pieces that's go right. I'll just either dodge out the way and just leave them. Leave them to like be in no man's land. They're still a very good team, still balanced, could win matches. On the world. Balance. <clears throat> Now, don't get me wrong, they have mutations, they have, they can get a lot of skills, a lot of better players, but their mortality rate is the issue. As soon as the goblins start getting picked off, and then you've got the Skaven, who could be taken out, any player knows that's going to see the Underworld, they're going to they're gonna bring a few tackle pieces to go right. I'm going to go headhunt that, um, that um, gutter runner, then I'm going to headhunt the thrower, and the rest of the team, I'll just try mo try and grind them down. This is where they start to get a bit weaker. Not weak, weak, but weaker. <clears throat> Vampires. Yeah. Come on, guys. You know, I know it. These guys are terrifying. The fact that Bloodlust no longer takes them off the pitch, and the fact they have more time to develop these players... I mean, think about this. You've got a Geist. A Vogue Geist. He's got enough skill level up to get block. And keep in mind, this guy's got claws and frenzy. He's going to rip dwarves to pieces. He's going to rip. I mean, yeah, you can't use the blitz, the block, like the mighty blow claw combo anymore, but he doesn't need it. I mean, yeah, you want to use the mighty blow combo, use the mighty blow to punch an armor if you don't make it, but the fact that this monster could do damage and don't keep and don't forget the runner movement eight give a movement up and sprint is like yep that's someone you're not going to catch easy or give it block and dodge and and even leap it's just like yeah you're not going to stop that thing i mean yes leap has took a nerf where wherever you land you still got to take a minus one to your um agility but do you really care if your if your agility's two plus and then you just have a leap, you go right. I'm just gonna, you go yeep, or give nerves a steal. Say yeah, I I don't care. You're around me. I'm gonna pick up this damn ball and you're gonna like it. Kind of thing. So it's like yeah. And yes, yeah, so you're gonna have like one or two vampires early, but at the end of the season, you're gonna have three very angry vampires who could just do horrendous damage. I mean, the floor as well. It's just like. It's like, I don't want to face the thrower. Because he can be a pseudo runner or a pseudo um, pass. He can use him as a pass or a pseudo runner. And the blitzer, if you give him block and tackle, yeah, he's just going to have fun with certain players. And finally, the Wood Elves. They're still above average because they can still make great players and get players, but their attrition is a problem. They're not reached balance yet, but they're tipping it. I would say they're on the borderline, but they're still good, still powerful. And that's it. This is my thoughts on this is the tier list for the YouTuber League style. What do you think? Do you think I'm. Do you agree with this kind of statistic or do you don't agree? Leave a comment in the comment section below what you think, who should be, you know, where. And I'll see you all in the next video where I'll be talking about a monster season. And oh boy, a lot of people are going to be scattering all over the place. Anyhow, I'll catch you later.